Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and boy, am I blown out for some reason. Not really sure what's going on. There we go. That's a little bit better. <gasps> All right. <sighs> I had a nice little vacation this past week, and I do appreciate everybody who gave me a few tips here and there, and I will tell you what's been going on. Now, my contractor... The latest thing was I needed to find shrubs, landscaping plants, uh, mainly because <laughs> at the end of the year, September, October, Lowe's has a lot of those things on sale for 90% off uh, because all season long they keep getting more and more things. Well, that has been the biggest stress for me. Um, that was Thomas's thing. Thomas would help plan landscaping for family and for his mother, those kind of things. So, you know, I'm like, ah, panicking big time. So I have asked a lot of you who are friends with me on Facebook to give me tips and ideas. And I have had a lot of tips and ideas. And I will tell you, I'm a little bit calmer from that. Um, I did decide that I do want to do some hollies. Um, a Dragon Lady Holly and then also an American Holly in the yard. Um, I do know that there, eventually I will plant an oak tree in Thomas's honor. And then I also think I would like a dogwood tree, you know, for trees off to the side once we get things, you know, settled, those kind of things. But, um, yeah, that was my biggest panic, and I thought, you know... I don't know what else to do. I do know that I would like some azaleas. Um, I do plan on planting some yellow roses later on. Um, yellow roses were my favorite, um, Thomas's favorite, and his father's favorite. And um, I just love yellow roses. So those are some things that I'm looking at right now. I haven't decided on other bushes. Um, my sister as suggested crepe myrtle and I don't know if crepe myrtle does well in this area I do know that the hollies do really well azaleas do well I have an azalea plant outside of my apartment and they're just no maintenance whatsoever um, hollies grow pretty fast so yeah those are some things that I'm looking at but I gotta tell you when he said that to me that was the biggest stressor I've had I've had no stress about choosing the colors of the trims on the windows, the the siding, <laughs> what I want inside the house, the flooring, you know, those kind of things. But for some reason, the plant just like, <gasps> oh my God, I had to make a choice. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Um, as far as the house, they are getting, they've put the storm drainage in. Um, they do had they did have to go down today and get another piece. And apparently we have to bond the road. Um, so they're trying to work with an insurance company to get the road bonded. Um, the person that, basically the family that owns this, said we have to bond it for 30000 And that's not true. You only have to bond it for 20000 And our question to them was, they have construction vehicles up and down that road all the time. In fact, the guy across the yard, which across the street there is building a house and they have construction vehicles up there all the time so um but our question was do we nor do we have to purchase it through an insurance company or can I just put 20,000 in escrow for it while the house is being built because that's that's only that's the largest amount that they can see for for that road and they do not have a road they uh weight limit on those roads so you know that kind of thing but waiting to hear from him on that um, because we can't get the uh, loads of stone in there to start moving the dirt and everything we need to do until we get that so we're kind of stuck okay I do have one finished item and it's this little vampire um, amigurumi um, I have made this before last year, and it just finished this one. And I thought, 
I had done the tie, but I think for a child I'm going to stitch it inside so that the cape is permanently in there and so you don't have to worry about the child pulling it off, putting it in their mouth or that kind of thing. Now, I've continued to work on my shawl from Creative Grandma and I'm not getting too far, but you know, I've been busy a little here and there and I've been cutting bags and sewing a couple bags and I hope to have those ready to post I don't think it'll be this week it'll probably be next week before I'm able to get those up but that's basically where I have been and what I have done this past week um, a lot of it is cleaning out things decluttering going through do I really need this does it need to go away and I will tell you there was a point last week that I thought I'm just going to order a dumpster and dump everything I'm just so done with it but I know not to do that um, a friend and I um, there are three of us total we have decided each year there is a campground outside of Lamar Pennsylvania and it is called the Lamar Lighthouse Campground and every year they do family things and they do a week of Bible study and all kinds of things so we are going to um, create some crafts for adults for in the afternoons for like two to four hours so we need to start working on those because they need to be ready to go before the board I believe she said the first week in February so We'll be getting some of those craft items, things together. And part of the reason my friend wanted to talk to me about this beforehand is she didn't want me to get rid of all my beads yet. Because I was thinking about selling them on eBay. Now, there are some that I will be selling on eBay as lots. Um, like the Crystal Swarovskis because, you know, I'm no longer using those kind of things. And I just can't see hanging on to them. For a long time so there are some beads that will go up there and some smaller beads that are not uh, good for uh, adults uh, who have might have vision issues so yeah we're looking at some fun crafts to do and uh, that's about it for that portion um, I will tell you a lot of the things that I've been moving um, I knew I had a lot of yarn um, but I have a buttload of yarn. <laughs> um, I told you about renting a storage unit. So the storage unit is pretty full. And um, I'm going to insert some pictures here of that. And I want you to know that there are only three of those totes, large totes, that are filled with Thomas's items. There is a file cabinet that has some of his research. There are maybe four small 15 quart items that have different things of Thomas's that I'm keeping, you know, like his dragons and those kind of things. Uh, because right now I just need to put them away so that I can, when the house is finished, then I can put them up in a display that um, I think Thomas would also enjoy. So, um,. I hope you enjoy those pictures and realize I have a buttload of yarn. That's not including the living room that is full of yarn, as well as quite a few other places in the house. I was a little surprised when I got another box from Crochet Society. Um, I had just gotten a box in last month and it was the one that had the Granny Square booklets and a bunch of other things so I was pretty surprised to see another box. Um, because I know that I'd signed up for the subscription that is every other month, so I wasn't expecting one this month. But, I did get a box. So let's open it up and check it out. Of course, 
box says inhale exhale and you know we probably need to do a lot more of that we probably need to do more of a deep breathing where we are breathing in deep from our belly so uh, yeah they always cover it with this nice tissue paper and oh, I can't get, get the sticker open so I'm going to tear it open alright first of all let's look at the yarn there are two skeins of Bella Coco's Stay Crafty DK and this one is in a beautiful baby blue. It is 60% bamboo, 40% polyamide. And then there is a lovely light um, melon color. You know, like honeydew melon. So there are two skeins in there. And I know she calls this DK. I consider that just a little bit smaller than DK, but... I'll go with it. Okay. Now I'm going to pull these out. I have no idea what they're for. But they should be interesting once we look into the book to see what they are. They're little octagons. Plain colors. Plain colors. And they are that, uh, the foam. They're foam items. And apparently there are some blocking pins in there as well. And of course, as always, there is a beautiful crochet hook. And this one is a 3.75 millimeter. It is pretty. Should be interesting to find out what we're doing. And then there is a small stitch marker. There that is. Let's see if I can get it to hold still. There. Come on, focus. There we go. A little bit. And then, of course, there is the booklet. It looks like we are making wrist warmers. <laughs> so, um... That I will enjoy making because we... We give out a lot of wrist warmers, uh, hand warmers in the prayer shawl ministry. Um, there is tea and chat, and these are lovely little magazines. There is a mandala, if you choose to do that. Um, which is awful beautiful. And what are they? Oh, blockbusters. Those are handy hexagons to block your latest crochet creations. <laughs> I guess you line them up like a puzzle and use that to block with. There is the picture of the crochet mitts. Very nice, very nice. And um, it does a little bit about uh, how to block in the magazine, things that you'll need. And um, yeah, it looks like the way that they line those up for the blocking is just line them up in a pattern that is big enough for you. And then, of course, there is... A pillow that you could choose to make instead so that's rather interesting and of course it looks like yellow is all the rage this year so um, yeah and there's a little bit about all the yellows that are coming out pretty soon now I believe I saw somewhere where there is a way for you to tell what number box you've gotten. And I'm assuming 
that that box number is in the UPC code just above it because there is a thing just above the UPC code that S says SPO B O O 34 so possibly this is box 34 don't quote me on that um, because I don't know don't know for sure or not all right now I'm going to tell you what I did this week. This weekend on Saturday, my friend Carrie and I went to a prayer, women's prayer meeting. And then afterwards, Hoover's Bernina in Mifflinburg. Every year they have this, and it's this big, huge sale. Um, they do a big anniversary giveaway thing where you, uh, you can win usually uh, sew it two different sewing machines a serger um, a horn table sewing machine table and then a chair and I believe sometimes an iron is in that but um, we decided after the prayer group meeting we would go over there because they always feed you um, Leon Hoover has the shop. He owns a shop with his mother and his family. And um, his next-door neighbor raises cattle. So the next-door neighbor donates hamburgers and hot dogs for this event. And also in the hopes that you will order from him. They do their own butchering of the cattle. And it's beautiful meat. It's just stunning. So... They give out hot dogs or hamburger or cheeseburger. You get your pick. Uh, chips and water. And then Hoover's also has an ice cream machine. So you can get a cup of ice cream. Usually vanilla and chocolate. Although while we were there, they were out of chocolate. And had to go run to the store to get more chocolate. <laughs> so we didn't get chocolate. But they also have fabric on sale which normally their prices run $7.99 a yard to $8.99 a yard unless you're getting uh, quilt backings which are four, usually $12.99 to $14.99 a yard. So, and it is quilt quality um, fabrics. They're just beautiful qualities. So I went through and I picked up a few fabrics. Well, Halloween is coming and I need some interior fabrics. So I did pick up just those for that as well as some spiders spider webs now this fabric these two fabrics go together they are in the same line so this will be the lining fabric that will be used for these bags and these are a mix of what I call paisley um, rainbow fabrics. I don't know what the name of it is. I haven't looked to see what it says on the fabric itself, although I don't see anything right off the bat. But um, I did pick up those for some bags, just because I do think it's beautiful. And then they had hummingbirds. And I love hummingbirds. So I did pick up some hummingbirds for that as well. And then, who doesn't love gnomes? And these are Christmas gnomes, so they'll be for the Christmas bags. Are those not adorable? Just absolutely adorable. So, uh, yeah. Those are some fabrics I'm looking to spend for making bags at Christmas time. And then I just picked up a nice blender, gray blender that I can use either inside the bags or whatever I would like to use for those. So that is it for purchases so far. Um, I think that's all. Yeah. All right, now we're ready for a little what in tarnation. Swimmer finds wedding ring lost in channel 17 years earlier. A swimmer in a British Columbia channel found a ring that had been dropped in the water by a man 17 years earlier. Penticton police released a statement seeking the owner of the ring found in the 
Hamilton Channel by a local swimmer and that the ring was engraved with the name Stephanie and Noel. The statement came to the attention of Noel Nissen's father-in-law. My father-in-law reached out to me. He said he'd seen an article on another news site and sent it my way saying, Is it yours? He told CBC News. Neeson said he had lost his wedding ring in the channel 17 years earlier. That ring was lost so long ago, I was just in complete shock, he said. Nissen said he and some friends had spent the day at the channel and he didn't realize until getting back to his car that the ring was missing. He said the ring, which was returned to him just in time for his 20th anniversary with his wife Stephanie, remains in good condition. You wouldn't believe how good of a shape it is in after 17 years in the channel. I would have thought for sure that it would have been worn down from years of water and sand going over it, he said. Now, wedding rings are an interesting thing. I know um, Thomas, being a geologist, he was always very careful when he was cutting rock. Um, but he forgot to take his ring off one time. He was opening a geode for someone in the community that brought it in and wanted to see what the insides were. And he forgot to take his ring off. And of course, when he was moving it through, the band accidentally got snagged. So, you know, of course, he went to purchase another band just like it and didn't quite get the same band. Um, as you can see, I wear both bands. This one on this side here is my band, and this was the second one that he got. The one that was, but uh, you know, cut in two is this one, and we chose not to have it welded together because it wouldn't fit him. So, um, yeah, interesting about wedding bands. All right, coyote found hiding in Ohio family's bathroom. Police were summoned to an Ohio home early Friday morning when residents made an unusual discovery in their bathroom, a coyote. The Trenton Police Department said in a Facebook post, officers responded about 518 Friday morning when a family reported a coyote was in their first floor bathroom. The family told the police the coyote must have entered the home about an hour earlier when the front door was left open so they could load up a vehicle for a road trip. The post included a photo of the coyote hiding behind the toilet. The animal was also present in the small restroom during its use by the family that morning, unknown to them, the post said. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be back in a second. Sorry about the interruption. Okay. Anyway, they say the coyote was safely removed from the home and released unharmed. Loose tiger sightings reported to police in Louisiana. Tigers? Really? Authorities in Louisiana are investigating numerous reports of a tiger or other big cat on the loose in the city. Several social media posts emerged Thursday night and early Friday morning reporting a tiger had been seen walking around Homa's downtown area. Maybe it's Homa's, Homa's but no photo or video, evide if video evidence of the, of, the bleh bleh of the animal emerged. The Homa Police Department said it received multiple calls about a big cat. Any time we receive multiple calls about something like this, we're obligated to perform a search, Department Representative told WVUE-TV. The representative said officers have not laid eyes on the animal themselves. The Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office said it received one report of a large cat on the loose, and deputies are currently speaking with local animal rescue groups about the sighting. Can you imagine going to pick up a prize um, that you won in the lottery and finding out that it wasn't the smaller amount you thought you won, but a much bigger amount? Virginia man trying to claim $600 lottery prize finds out he won $1 million. 
A Virginia man who visited a state lottery office to claim a $600 prize was shocked to learn that his ticket was actually worth $1 million. Jose Flores Velasquez of Annadale told Virginia lottery officials he picked up the 20 time the money scratch off ticket from the Safeway store in Annadale when he stopped to buy some soft drinks. Velasquez said he thought the ticket was a $600 winner, so he took it to the Virginia Lottery's Customer Service Center in Woodbridge to claim his modest prize. The player said he was stunned when employees at the center looked at his ticket and told him it was a $1 million ticket. The winner chose to take his winnings at one time, a lump sum of $759,878 dollars before taxes. He said the prize money will go toward taking care of his family and potentially starting his own business. What a great surprise! Now lately there have been more and more whales that have been seen. Um, so this one, this story is rather interesting. Sea lion jumps onto boat to escape killer whales. A pair of boaters off the British Columbia coast received a shock when their small vessel was nearly capsized by a sea lion fleeing from killer whales. Ernest and Vicia Godek said they cut their engine when they spotted a trio of killer whales near their boating while fishing in Petter Bay near Victoria. The pair said they soon heard a banging on the bottom of the boat followed by the appearance of a sea lion at the side of their craft. The sea lion then jumped onto the side of the boat in an apparent attempt to escape the killer whales. It tipped the boat over to the point where we had to hang on to the gunnels. The water started pouring into the boat. I was just hoping that we wouldn't totally tip over, Ernest told the Times colonist. The boat righted itself and the sea lion plunged back into the water. The couple said it continued to follow them as they headed back to shore. Photos and video of the encounter were captured by passengers on a nearby whaling watching boat. Mark Mallison, the vessel operator, estimated the California sea lion weighed seven to eight hundred pounds. If that animal had landed in the boat, somebody could have gotten seriously hurt just from the sheer size or from its teeth, Mallison told CTV News. And yes, there is a video link to it. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. There have been a lot of interruptions, and I do apologize for it. So, you know, if it seems a little choppy, I do apologize. But, as always... Let's be kind to one another, love one another, and get out there and see this big, beautiful world. And let's end with a little bit of a devotional. In the light. With you is the fountain of light. In your light we see light. This comes from Psalm 36, 9, the New King James Version. How would you explain color to a blind person? I think we've already done that one. We have. Let's move on. Sorry about that. Peace is mine. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. 2 Thessalonians 3, 16. The uh, English Standard Version is where that comes from. Think of a time when your life was absolutely perfect. How long did it last? Whether a moment, an hour, or even several days, eventually the shine wore off and life, real life, crept back in. Here on earth, things will never be perfect. This is why the peace of the Lord is such a valuable treasure. Jesus has overcome the world, so when we give him our hearts, his peace forms a barrier between us and everything that would steal our joy. Have you wandered away from the peace of God? And how can you get it back? Now, I will say one of the easiest ways that I have heard um, 
people talk about praying and getting that peace, sometimes they don't have peace, is to simply pray out loud. So give it a try. The other thing is there is something called Pray the Bible. Um, there is a book that is out there is called Pray the Bible. It's where you just start reading scripture and you pray the scriptures that you're reading. So those are some ideas and as always one of the easiest ways to get your peace back is just to reconnect with God. Alright, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.